Okay, this lesson is on linear transformations. We're going to be able to define translation, and um, we're going to also take a look at some parent, which are also called mother functions, um, and then we're going to determine the transformations of linear and absolute value functions. So I've got some pictures here of the different type of types of transformations um, that we can see in a coordinate plane, but basically all that a transformation is is a change in an image in the coordinate plane. So you, you take an image, you apply a transformation, and you get a new image. So I'm going to pause real quick and I'm going to bring us over to a different screen. Okay, so the first type of transformation you're going to see is called a reflection. Um, in this particular case, we're going to see a reflection over the x-axis. The x-axis is going to act kind of like a mirror, so your reflection is just going to flip down in this case. Now we can also see reflections over the y-axis as well, so here we have a parabola that's going to be reflected over the y-axis, and there in blue is your resulting image. Um, we also see translations. Now, uh, here's your, your beginning function, and if we apply a horizontal translation, that means it's going to only move left to right. So in this case here, we have a horizontal translation. It's moving left. All Every single point is moving the exact same distance to the left. So that's called a horizontal translation. We can also have vertical translations as well. So here's our parabola, and we're going to translate that up the same amount of units for every single point. Um, the last type of uh, transformation is called a stretch or a shrink. So I'm first going to illustrate a stretch. So a stretch, um, it actually stretches all of your y values up, which is why you end up with a skinnier parabola. Okay, so in this case, a stretch, um, it makes the graph look skinnier, and a shrink um, actually makes the graph uh, fatter. So for a shrink, we start with our parabola and all of a sudden our parabola gets a little bit fatter so a shrink actually makes it fatter a stretch makes it taller okay so here are basically your three different types of transformations that we just discussed written in little picture form so you can kind of have that for you yourself there um, what I'm gonna do now is go through each mother uh, function it's sometimes called the parent function but I like to call it the mother function um, and it's the most basic graph of each type of family that you're gonna see so the first parent function or mother function is the line y equals x so this is a linear function and it's gonna have a slope here of 1 over 1 and a y-intercept of 0 so a lot of times kids get confused with this it's just a line when it says y equals x think of it as y equals x plus 0 so you're gonna start at 0 and your slope is gonna go up one to the right one and you just keep doing that. Uh, I can go down one, left one as well. So here is the mother function for a linear function, okay? The next graph, number two here. This is a quadratic, and it's gonna sh take the shape of a parabola. So in this case, um, we probably wanna draw a table, and this is your most basic table for x, y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I square negative 2, I get 4. If I square negative 1, I get 1. If I square 0, still 0. And then I see some um, points repeated. So negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. Okay, now I can keep continuing to draw in additional points, but there is the uh, mother function for a quadratic or a parabola. For an absolute value function, y equals the absolute value of x. You can also make your table here. And I can plug in any points again that I want. I'm going to just do negative 2 to 2. So if I take the absolute value of these, I get this resulting table. And here's my v shape. And there is the basic mother function for an absolute value function. So this is an absolute value. You should always get a V-shape. Okay, now the newest one that you haven't probably seen before, um, maybe you saw this in Algebra 1, but probably not. This is a square root function. So a square root function doesn't take the shape of a line, it doesn't take a V-shape, and it's not a parabola either. Um, in this case, I also can't just go ahead and plug in any you know, normal points that I would plug in before. So if I took my standard negative 2 to 2 here and I try to plug in and do the square root of negative 2, hopefully you know now that this would be classified as an imaginary number, okay? So we can't actually use negative 2. We also can't use negative 1. We actually can't use anything 
that would make the inside of this radical become negative because we can't take the square root of a negative number. So my starting point here is actually going to be at zero. I can take um, all positive reals as well as the number zero because I can take the square root of zero. So we have to make sure that the inside of this function here is um, a positive or equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to start at zero and create some points. Now, zero, zero is pretty easy. If I take the square root of zero, I get zero. If I take the square root of one, I get one. Now it's trickier though. When I take the square root of two, that's a little bit harder to graph. So I actually don't want to pick values like this or even three. The square root of four though, that's something I can easily graph. So that would be a good one. Think about the next number that you can take the square root of. In this case, I would pick nine because the next integer here would be three. So the square root of nine is three. And I want to continue to pick points like that. Now, you could also kind of flip that idea and pick y values first. So instead, I'm going to erase this here. This is kind of strange because we haven't done this before yet. But instead of picking y, uh, x values, I'm going to actually select my y values because I know I can plot 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what I want to do is I'm going to say, okay, what would I stick inside this function here so that I would get the square root of, um, so I would get zero after I took the square root of it. So that would be zero. You can also think of this backwards. You, if you square both sides of this and just square this number here, you would get one. Square two, you get four. Square three, you get nine. Square four, you get 16. So now I have actual points that I can plot here a little bit easier. So when I do that, my square root function, so zero, zero, one, one, 4, 2, 9, 3. My square root function starts to look like this. Okay, I can't really fit 16, 4. So this is the mother function, the basic function for a square root graph. Okay, now on the next page, we are only going to talk about linear transformations. So basically, let me go back up to here. We're going to take a linear function, the mother function here, and we're going to see what happens when we um, apply some transformations. Okay, so what I would like you guys to do is um, go ahead and graph each of these here, and then we're going to talk about what happens. So go ahead, pause the video, and graph each of those lines. Okay, so I went ahead and I graphed each one of those lines, and I did it in a different color for each one. So you can kind of see the corresponding color here. Um, so we have in black our linear function, um, the mother function here, y equals x, right? And each one of these lines represents a transformation. Now, hopefully you're noticing that these are vertical transformations or um, basically moving up gra the graph. So like in this case here for the red line here, um, y equals x plus one, for every point it moved, it shifted up one unit, right? So it's moving up one unit and I could keep drawing this forever, but each point here is just getting shifted up one unit. Now, um, in each case, Obviously, it's changing a different amount, but this one was shifted up three units, and this one was shifted down four units. Okay, in example number two, I actually want to start with a table for this one. I'm going to move this over here so I can get a table for our mother function. y equals x. Um, if negative two is x, then y is also negative two. So I'm just going to draw this in really quick because I want to use this so that we can um, make some observations here. Okay, so there's my standard table, negative two to two. Now, um, I'm going to fill out a table, and I'd like you guys to pause and do the same thing, but fill out a table for um, these two functions here, but change this to seven halves, okay? I want you to fill out a table because we're gonna be able to um, see some unique things here. Okay, so I just filled out the table for both of those two functions. Um, instead of graphing them using the table though, I'm just gonna use uh, slope intercept form. Whoops, there I go. So I'm just going to use slope intercept form here. So I'm going to go um, for the red line here. I'm going to go at zero because the y intercept here is, is zero, right? It's plus zero. And I'm going to go up one to the right two and just draw some points in. And connect my line here. Okay. And for the uh, blue line, again, I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to go up seven and to the right two. And down seven and left two. Okay. So. We could, again, plot these points, but I don't want to really graph negative seven halves and all that other stuff. So what I wanted you to be able to look at here were the table of values. So if we look at these values here for the y's, um, I want you to tell me what happens when you compare your you know, parent function, your mother function here, 
to the red line. Do you see how all of your values, when x is the same, so x is negative 2 here, these values are smaller. All of your y values here are smaller. This is called a shrink. Okay, so this is a shrink because all of these values are now smaller. Okay, everything on the line is getting smaller and smaller as far as the y value. So this is a shrink. Now in the other, um, in the blue line, all of these table values are getting larger, right? It goes from negative 2, all of a sudden it's jumping up to negative 7. So these values here have stretched, right? They've gone up and they've stretched. All of these are stretching out, um, and you're getting a much steeper graph. So this is a stretch. And I want you to look at the numbers here. This number is less than 1. This number is larger than 1, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, now the last graph here, y equals negative x. Go ahead and make a table and see what happens here. Okay, so in this case, I see that I actually have a reflection over this y-axis here. Okay, so this is acting as a mirror almost. Um, it's going to reflect all of the points, and they just move and flip. Okay, so this is a reflection, and... And in this case, it's also a reflection over the y-axis, or x-axis, I'm sorry, as well. So it's kind of interesting here, it does both, um, but we're going to typically focus on reflections over the y-axis. Okay, now the critical thinking part here, I want you to take a look at these two functions, y equals x and y equals one-third x minus two. So this is your parent or mother function, and we're going to compare it to this. So think about what is happening to this graph here, the normal parent function, if we were to apply both transformations. One where we multiply, which is like problem two, and one where we have um, minus two, so we're, we're taking two units away from it, like problem number one. And then the last one here, you're going to explain the transformations that would occur between the mother function again and this new function. Um, so come to class tomorrow prepared to explain both of those, and um, that would be kind of your entrance into class.